Make sure to use code BANGLE at sign up on FanDuel for a $20 deposit bonus and check out my second channel for other games coming up like Red Dead Redemption 2 and Call of Duty Black Ops 4 as well as my third channel with collaborations with some of your favorite YouTubers. Let's get into the video. What's going on guys? Bangle again here coming back at you with another video and I'm sure on this video absolutely no one will disagree with me. Everyone will be 100% on the same page. It's going to be fantastic. The like to dislike ratio is going to be perfect, 100%. Nobody's going to dislike the video at all because no one will disagree with me. Here today, we are doing a playoff bracket prediction. A lot of you guys have been asking me to do this, so I am more than happy to comply and come out with this video. Um, it'll be a really interesting playoffs because, I mean, you have a couple of juggernauts. Saints and Rams have been fantastic all year in the NFC, uh, and the Patriots and the Chiefs have been fantastic all year in the AFC. Those are the four teams with first-round buys. Of course, two in the NFC, two in the AFC. And then out of the wild card teams, I would say the two best are probably the Chargers and the Bears. And I don't know. Let's well, let's not spoil it. Let's just go ahead, jump right into the video. My NFL playoff predictions for 2018. I'll pick each game and I'll give you a little bit of breakdown of why I'm doing so. Starting off in the AFC, we have the Colts and the Texans. It's Deshaun Watson versus Andrew Luck. So the defenses on both teams are interesting, to say the least. The Colts have underperformed in the secondary all year, in my opinion, but you do have a pretty healthy safety core. And then the Texans have been overall pretty great. Their pass rush is good. You've seen the emergence of guys like Christian Covington. Obviously, J.J. Watt's been there. He's been fantastic. DJ Reader is a very good player. Um, and then you have Jadavian Clowney. You have a very good bunch of defenders. At linebacker, Zach Cunningham's been pretty good. And even though DJ Reader is a guy that only has two sacks, he basically plays a nose tackle role for them. He's a run stuffer. He's going to swallow up the runs. He's going to hold blocks. He's going to do exactly what you want out of someone that's 330 pounds. And he's a big reason why this defense has been as successful as it has been this year. And I think the Colts just don't have anything to match defensively. They just, they're just they just not good enough, comparably, uh, as far as players go, uh, to the Texans. The Colts just don't have it. But when you flip over onto the other side of the ball, offensively, I think it's a completely different story. And it basically revolves around one player, and that is Andrew Luck. Now, their running game has been fairly solid recently because their offensive line play has been so great. Quentin Nelson has been phenomenal in his rookie season with the Colts. And Anthony Costanzo, still a very solid left tackle. They've had great play from everybody. Braden Smith at right tackle has performed pretty well. Eric Ebron has looked like a top tight end in the league because of Andrew Luck. T.Y. Hilton continuing to be fantastic. He mixes out between uh, that outside wide position at wide receiver and in the slot. Very versatile player that is going to get open and is going to get yards week in, week out. He's a very consistent player. It doesn't really matter about Marlon Mack or Naheem Hines, who I know uh, has received a lot of time um, recently. He's in that, that three wide receiver set, uh, which seems to be kind of their default setup that they go to. At wide receiver, outside of that, I mean, Eli Rogers is, or excuse me, Chester Rogers is, is not anything special. Uh, and Ryan Grant, not anything special, but Andrew Luck makes them special. Andrew Luck is a special player, and he makes everybody around him much better. For the Texans, you guys know I'm not an insane Deshaun Watson fan, and the reason for that is because I just don't think Deshaun Watson's all that good. I know I, people are going to hate that off the bat that I'm saying that, but his metrics as a passer are very, very bad. They just are. They're terrible. And we didn't even talk about Justin Reed or Andre Hal uh, or Kareem Jackson for the uh, for the Texans, mainly just talked about their front seven. Bernard McKinney, too. Tyron Matthews, pretty good. Uh, but on the offensive side of the ball for them, they have a bottom offensive line in the league. I mean, you're starting Julian Davenport at left tackle and Kendall Lamb at right tackle. These are not solid offensive linemen. Senio Calamante at left guard. You have Nick Martin at center is probably the best lineman of the bunch, and he's not even very good. And then Zach Fulton at right guard has gotten worse seemingly every year. Here's what you have going for you. DeAndre Hopkins. That's it. You have DeAndre Hopkins going for you. Lamar Miller is a decent player. And the reason I don't love Deshaun Watson 
is because he's not a great passer. He has a very lucky streak going for him as far as turnovers go. Like, he's just not a very accurate passer, especially not deep. But he can kill you, absolutely kill you in the running game. He's a mobile quarterback that's extremely hard to take down. He gets out of the pocket. He makes plays there. So in my opinion, the matchup to watch in this game is going to be how well can guys like Darius Leonard stop Deshaun Watson from scrambling. He's the NFL tackles leader or tackles leader uh, this year. Bobby Wagner actually might be number one, but he, he's up there in the top three for sure. But it's going to have to be, can Darius Leonard shut down Deshaun Watson? Can this defensive line and front seven step up, control him in the pocket, force him to beat you through the air? And if they can shut down DeAndre Hopkins, which I think is going to be pretty much impossible considering what they have at cornerback with Pierre Desir and Quincy Wilson, no one can shut down DeAndre Hopkins. Not even the best cornerbacks in the league have been able to fare too well against him. He's just that good of a player. I know we've talked a lot about this game, but it's a very interesting one. I would probably lean towards the Colts. I'm going to say that they're probably not a better team, but Andrew Luck is the best player in this game. Quarterback is the most important position. And even though J.J. Watt is you know the best player, maybe, he's not the most valuable player. That's going to be the quarterback. Andrew Luck is uh, the most valuable player in this game. And I think the Colts are going to find a way to win against the Houston Texans. As we move on to Chargers, Ravens, I'm going to spend a little bit less time on this one. It's basically a super high-powered offense in Los Angeles with the Chargers. Philip Rivers, who's had an insane season, versus the number one defense in the NFL, and that is the Baltimore Ravens. Defense wins championships, but in this instance, I would probably lean towards the Los Angeles Chargers. Uh, Philip Rivers has been incredible, and then you have Keenan Allen. Mike Williams has come on so well as of late. Melvin Gordon's going to be back and healthy again. I just don't know how you, you match up uh, if you're the Baltimore Ravens. Your defense is good, but... It, I, I don't think you can account for every single weapon that the Chargers have. And they're a team that can beat you deep. And the safety play for the Ravens has not been incredible. It hasn't been by any stretch. You look at some of the players on that team that are getting a lot of reps. And they just can't perform. Their safety play is consistently bad. Tony Jefferson, I think he had two penalties in that Cleveland Browns game that really, really hurt the Ravens down the stretch. And when you have Keenan Allen, and Mike Williams, and, and Travis Benjamin's not great, but he is a deep threat, and Tyrell Williams is kind of the same deal. I just don't think you'll be able to account for that, and the Chargers defense is good enough where they have Melvin Ingram, who's a beast. You have Joey Bosa, who's a beast, and then even though Casey Hayward's taken a step back, he's still a formidable cornerback, and Derwin James is probably the defensive rookie of the year. Uh, I know a lot of you are going to be saying that's Darius Leonard. I think it's probably going to be Derwin James. He's just been phenomenal, fantastic, and when these two teams are close, I think in this day and age, I am going to take the better offense nine times out of 10. And uh, I have to go all day with the Chargers. Lamar Jackson is going to be a particularly difficult player to stop. But if you can force him to throw, that's probably his weakness right now. He's not an insanely developed passer. And the targets aren't fantastic. Michael Crabtree is uh, not the player he used to be. John Brown isn't the player he used to be. Willie Sneed is okay. Uh, and then Mark Andrews has probably been the team's best receiver, and they haven't really had much of a running game. Gus Edwards has played okay, and Lamar Jackson has really been their runner. Uh, and I know they have a pretty good defense, but I'm going to take the high-powered offense, and I'm going to go with the Chargers here. Over to the NFC for a moment, as we have the Seahawks and the Cowboys. I'm shocked that the Seahawks have managed to, uh, to get it together here and make the playoffs, because when you look at them on paper, they're not very good. Some of your top players are not playing, and that's, I think, really what it comes down to. Earl Thomas, out for the season. Cam Chancellor, probably his career's over. Both of them will not be in Seattle next year, one way or another, in my opinion. And your best player is Bobby Wagner. Puna Ford has been incredible. And as a Texas Longhorn fan, I absolutely love to see that. Puna Ford is a really, really good player. He was awesome at Texas, and he is that prototypical nose tackle style player. Um, and he's actually excelled at getting uh pressure lately as well so that's good to see their defensive line solid i like jaron reed i like frank clark i wonder about some of the other players there in their base defense i think shaquille griffin's okay nothing special really the best cornerback on their team this year has been trey flowers and bradley mcdougald had an exceptional season to start their offensive line has gotten much better in the run game 
I still worry a lot about them in the past game about protecting Russell Wilson, but he's so good uh, at escaping pressure and finding the open receivers, and it doesn't really seem to matter. And then Doug Baldwin has been one of the most underrated receivers in the NFL these past couple of years, and, and Tyler Lockett has had a very good season as well. I don't really value Chris Carson that highly, if I'm honest. I don't, but he's had a pretty good season. And um, I feel like you wasted a pick, it seems like, with uh, with Rashad Penny out of San Diego State. He just doesn't matter that much. You play Mike Davis more than you play your first-round pick, Rashad Penny, and I'm not sure how much that's going to change over time. Uh, but this Seattle team, they've played pretty well. You've, it really has been next man up and players stepping up over the course of the season to play well. And for me, it's just not going to matter. I hate the Cowboys, but I think the Cowboys are the best team here. You have Ezekiel Elliott. You have a pretty solid offensive line. We'll see if Tyron Smith comes back. I'm not sure if he's going to for the playoffs. I know he didn't play in Week 17 uh, versus the Giants. I think he'll probably be back for the playoffs, and he's an incredible left tackle. Still probably the best in the NFL, in my opinion. Uh, and their defense has really just been unbelievable this year. And I tweeted out. You guys feel free to follow me on Twitter. Link will be down in the description, Bengal Designs. But this Cowboys team, if they could find a better quarterback, this is one of the scariest teams in the NFC. I think Dak holds them back a lot. And if Leighton Vander Esch is going to play, and Jalen Smith is going to play, if you have these guys healthy, I think Sean Lee's coming back for the playoffs even, this is a really, really tough team to go against. Byron Jones has been incredible this year at cornerback. He's made that move from safety to cornerback, and he's been a better player than he ever was at safety. Demarcus Lawrence is playing like he wants to get paid again because last year, contract year, played amazingly. Then he got franchise tagged, and now he's like, all right, I'm still amazing. He's been incredible. Um, and I just think this this Cowboys team is just better. Offensive line, solid. Ezekiel Elliott, top five running back. It doesn't matter. And Dak even has played pretty well. Amari Cooper's really helped out this offense. I think this Cowboys team is just better. The other wild card matchup is going to be the Eagles versus the Bears. Uh, I'm not going to spend too much time on this. I don't believe in the magic of Foles. I don't even care if Carson Wentz comes back. It really wouldn't change things for me that much. I think this Bears team is just better. Their defense is one of the best in the NFL, if not the best. I know we talked about the Ravens being the number one ranked defense, but I think this Bears team, at least on paper, is better. They have better players, and they excel at taking the football away. And something that the Eagles have struggled with is turning over the football. When you have so many incredible players at each position, Khalil Mack, Eddie Goldman, Akeem Hicks has proven to be one of the most underrated and most dominant players in the entire NFL. Leonard Floyd has played pretty well. The cornerback play has been exceptional. Prince of Mucamara has been as good as he's ever been. Kyle Fuller is really coming into his own. And then you look at the safeties. Eddie Jackson is a turnover interception, force fumble, fumble recovery, touchdown machine. He's really just such a fun player to watch at the deep safety. And that's not even mentioning Adrian Amos, who's just so good as well. Uh, and their linebacking core, I like a lot. Roquan Smith was one of my favorite players in the draft. He's played okay this season. And Danny Trevathan, I feel like every time I turn on a Bears game, he's making a play. Um, and then the offense side of the ball, Trubisky has been formidable, not incredible. Their offensive line has played pretty well. And then uh, Allen Robinson, Taylor Gabriel, it's an all right receiving core. Trey Burton's been all right. Uh, and then their running back combo has been vicious. Thunder and lightning with Jordan Howard and Tariq Cohen. It's been super exciting to watch. I think this Bears team's better. I'm not going to spend too much time breaking down the Eagles who have been uh, riddled with injuries this year. It's really been unfortunate if you're an Eagles fan. It's a real big Super Bowl slump. They barely made the playoffs and I think they're not going to last very long. I don't think this Eagles team uh, can hang with a team like the Bears. I mean, you never know. This is why you play the games. Uh, Alshon Jeffrey's good. Zach Ertz is obviously fantastic. Jason Kelsey has been incredible, as Brandon Brooks and Lane Johnson has been. So if there's any offensive line in the league that can stop this Bears' potent pass rush attack, it probably would be this Eagles team. But with Jay Ajayi out and some of your best cornerbacks out, you have Rasul Douglas and Avante Maddox. I mean, that's just not your best cornerback duo possible. Malcolm Jenkins is good, but outside of that, I don't think you have too much going on. Uh, outside of the front seven in the secondary. Defensive line, obviously fantastic. Brandon Graham and Fletcher Cox is a really, really competent duo. Haloti Nada has been pretty solid for the Eagles this year, and Michael Bennett is great as well. But I just don't think they're going to be able to hang. I think the Bears are a better team, and um, they're going to come out on top.
Jumping back over to the AFC for the AFC divisional round, we have the Colts and the Chiefs. We've already kind of done these team breakdowns. Uh, bottom line for me in this Colts-Chiefs game is the Colts are not as good as the Chiefs. It doesn't matter about the Chiefs' defense being a little bit lackluster, and we haven't talked about some of these first-round bye teams, so I, I will do that for a minute. But the Chiefs have the best offense in the NFL. Patrick Mahomes will win the MVP. He has played like the best quarterback in the NFL this year, uh, obviously. Their defense has been super solid. D Ford in a contract year has been amazing. And Justin Houston is still one of the most underrated players in the NFL, as is Chris Jones on the inside, who's been phenomenal. I don't think he had a sack through the first four weeks of the season, but after that, I think he had a sack or more every single week. He finished the year with 15 and a half sacks. 15 and a half. That's absolutely incredible for not getting one the first four weeks and then not playing last week or this past week in week 17. Just absolutely incredible. He also had an interception this year for what it's worth. Uh, he's been just insane. Uh, their cornerback and, and safety play hasn't been that good, but it doesn't matter. No one in the entire league can hang with this offense. You have the best tight end in football, Travis Kelsey. You have Tyreek Hill, arguably the fastest player in the league, it seems like an absolute Swiss Army knife that can hurt you in so many ways. It doesn't matter that they don't have Kareem Hunt. It doesn't matter that their starting running back now is Damian Williams or, and they get Sharkandrick West in there. Or, um, it, it, it just doesn't matter because you have Patrick Mahomes and you have Travis Kelsey and Tyreek Hill. That's the winning combo. Chris Conley, all right, I get it. He's okay. Demarcus Robinson's okay. But it's really Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey. And there's not a team that can take those two weapons off the field. You just can't. Offensive line's been pretty good. Mitchell Schwartz is solid. Eric Fisher's starting to play better, you know, as, as the years go on. He was the number one overall pick uh, years ago now at this point. But Mahomes is is the MVP. And this Chiefs team's going to find a way to win. I, I, just, I just don't think they're capable of being stopped by even some of the best defenses in the league. And I, I don't think that's the Colts. Chiefs advance to the AFC Conference Championship. We're also not going to spend too much time on this Patriots-Chargers game. Uh, at the end of the day, and I hate to take this cop out, but the Patriots find a way to win in the playoffs. And we will kind of analyze this one a bit more. Their offensive line has been fantastic. They still have Gronkowski. I imagine that he, uh, despite playing injured most of this year and having a down year, is still going to be a big impact player in this game. Julian Edelman is one of Brady's favorite targets, and he gets a job done. But of course... You're not talking about the New England Patriots offense without Tom Brady and throwing it to his running backs out of the backfield. Sony Michelle has had a pretty solid year, uh, and they've also gotten James White involved quite a bit. He's fantastic, and uh, this team is just its just too good. Philip Dorsett has played pretty well this year, and that's not even to talk about their defense. Stephon Gilmore has played like the best cornerback in the NFL this year. Devin McCourty and Jason McCourty proves to be a great brotherly duo. They've been awesome. Dante Hightower is still pretty good. And then Deron Harmon and Patrick Chung have still played really well. Um, J.C. Jackson has had a great year. He's a rookie that's getting a lot of snaps and playing well. And that is not even talking about Trey Flowers, one of the most underrated players in the league, and Lawrence Guy, who's having an incredible season. Lawrence Guy has come out of nowhere with the Patriots. Like, how do they do this every single year? He only has one sack this year, but it's not his job. He's been that interior presence, shutting down the run. He has 59 tackles from that 3-4 end defensive tackle spot. He's been just so good. Elandon Roberts and Kyle Van Noy has played all right. They play like a multiple system. Um, so even though Kyle Van Noy and Elandon Roberts, like they can rush the passer. Kyle Van Noy is more of a pass rusher than a stand-up linebacker, in my opinion. They just they play a weird multiple uh, scheme that's just effective it gets the job done Lawrence guy has been awesome we talked about I love Malcolm Brown hook him horns but he hasn't played amazingly this year uh, and then John Simon is just all right but just overall this is a better team than the Chargers so I think the Patriots are going to win this one which means we're going to see a Patriots Chiefs AFC Conference Championship jumping back over to the NFC we have the Saints and the Cowboys and this is a game that's actually already happened this year so we get to see the playoff rematch, and I think that is a pretty fun tale. The Saints in this game were not good. Drew Brees had only one touchdown and one interception, only threw for 127 yards, and they were overwhelmed 
by the Dallas Cowboys defense. It doesn't matter that the Cowboys um, could only score 13 points because they ended up winning the game because their defense was just that good. Dak Prescott, listen to these numbers. 24 for 28, 249, and one touchdown. Here's why that matters to me. You might hear those numbers and think, wow, that's so good. Well, Dak is a check down machine and he really relies on yards after the catch to get his yardage numbers up. And when that doesn't happen, they're not very good. So you only throw for one touchdown. Your offensive uh, production from the backfield it was limited. Ezekiel Elliott on 23 carries only had 75 yards, 3.3 yards per carry. It's just, he it was just, just not effective at all. And if this Saints defense can play as well as they did in this game, and that really is a tale for me. It's not, wow, this Cowboys defense is so good that they shut down the Saints. I don't think it's going to happen again. I think this Saints defense, which was kind of shaky, shut down the Cowboys. They only allowed 13 points. This is not a team, and an amazingly well-coached team at that, that can come back, replan, and figure out a way to drop, you know, 20-plus points, 30 points on you. I just don't think it's going to happen. This Saints team with Drew Brees and Alvin Kamara and Mark Ingram, Michael Thomas, they will find a way, Sean Payton, head coach, they will find a way to game plan differently and come back and drop 30 plus. That's very easy for the New Orleans Saints to do. They've dropped 30 points or more so many times this season. If you look at the Saints schedule against some of the better defenses, the Saints have been so good. This is the best or second best offense in the NFL. One of the two, take your pick. They scored 40 on the Bucks, which isn't particularly impressive um, to start the year. And that was just the start of what they did. When the Falcons were more healthy, they scored 43. I know that game went to overtime. Against the Redskins, 43. And that defense wasn't great. Against the Ravens, they scored 24. Uh, and the Ravens is defense number one in the league, really. Dropped 30 against the Vikings. Dropped 45 against the Rams. 51 against the Bengals. 48 versus the Eagles. 31 again versus the Falcons. And the, the, really their worst performance of the year was against the Cowboys. They only scored 10 points. Then they come back, score 28 against the Bucks again. 33, um, they're 31, excuse me, against the Steelers. This is a team that just puts up points. And for me, uh, when you have an offense like the Cowboys that, that can't capitalize and can't score as many points, it doesn't matter. I, I have the Saints in this one all day. Ah, another season rematch. We have the Bears versus the Rams, and that was a really interesting game. The Bears only scored 15, but the Rams only scored 6. Here's why I don't think that's going to be as big of a factor. This game took place in Chicago. It was a very cold night. I mean, you you could see the players' breath. Not that that really tells you much, but Todd Gurley was shut down. And usually in the cold, you can expect to run the ball fairly well because the passing isn't going to be as much of a factor because the receivers probably can't catch as well when their hands are freezing. I don't know if you ever try to catch the ball in the cold, but it is more difficult than in uh, proper conditions. But Jared Goff also couldn't throw the ball in the cold. Zero touchdowns, four interceptions, only threw for 180 yards. Of the 44 passes he attempted, he only completed 20 of them. Not a very good completion percentage right there. And again, Todd Gurley, 11 carries, 28 yards, only averaged two and a half per carry. He was shut down. This Bears defense is the real deal. But we're going out to Los Angeles for this one. Conditions probably will be perfect. It's Los Angeles. That's just kind of what happens in LA. Uh, The weather's always fantastic. Sometimes it gets a bit hot. But keep in mind, this is going to be in January. It's going to be probably pretty warm there. You're talking about maybe it'll dip down into the 50s, 60s. But this is overall going to be good weather right now. As I record it, it is uh, 55 degrees there, and the high was 60. So you're probably going to see it somewhere in that range. Maybe it'll dip down to high 40s, mid 50s. It's going to be pretty good football weather. It just will be. It's not going to be 10 degrees like it can get to uh, uh, and even colder in Chicago. So when you take a high-powered offense, one of the best offenses in the league in the Rams versus one of the best defense in the league in the Bears, it's going to be a really fun matchup to watch. Just two juggernauts going at it. The question for me is, will the Bears be able to find the holes in the Rams defense and beat them that way? I don't really think they have the deep threats to do that. Like Taylor Gabriel is probably your best bet uh, as their cornerbacks are kind of slow. Marcus Peters, Akeem Tlaib, kind of slow. They get beat deep over the top, especially Marcus Peters. He really just uh, tries to take away the under every chance he gets, and he leaves himself 
uh, in an opportunity in a position to get burned and exposed consistently. But uh, I just think that when it comes down to it, the Rams are going to be able to come back, plan how to beat this Bears defense. And I think it's going to be a fun game. I just don't think the Bears offense is going to be able to hang. I think it's going to be a different game in LA. Sean McVay, one of the, the brightest minds in the NFL, is going to find a way to dissect this Bears defense and beat them. It's a really fun matchup. I think this one really could go either way. But in ideal conditions, I am going to take the Rams over the Bears to advance to the conference championship and face the Saints. I have taken all of the favorites, but I think they're the favorites for a reason. They are the better teams. Now in the conference championships where thing, things really start to get interesting. Chiefs-Patriots, another rematch. The Patriots managed to win this one, I believe, only by a field goal. I think it was like, what, 43-40 uh, earlier on in the season? Yeah, 43-40. It was just an absolute slugfest with the Chiefs' best offense in the league, in my opinion, versus the Patriots. The old quarterback in Tom Brady, the Wiley veteran, 41 years old or so, versus one of the younger quarterbacks in the NFL, and Patrick Mahomes, who's only 23, and will win the MVP. We talked about that. I don't think it's even a question. Uh, and Kareem Hunt was a big factor in this game. 10 carries, but for 80 yards. Averaging 8 per carry. Still is the Patrick Mahomes show. Tyreek Hill torched the defense. 7 catches for 142 and 3 touchdowns. Kareem Hunt also big factor in the passing game. We talked about how good he was in this game just a couple seconds ago. 5 catches for 105 and a touchdown. He was an absolute menace. The Patriots didn't have an answer for him, honestly. But for me... I think that's a lot to do with how good Patrick Mahomes is and trying to account for Travis Kelsey and trying to account for Tyreek Hill. So you leave the running back open on the underneath. So oftentimes it, it doesn't matter how good of a runner the guy is in space because they're going to have a lot of space to get it done. So I think Damian Williams is going to be just fine in that position. Uh, and it really, this one could go either way. When you, when you get to the AFC Championship, I mean, these teams are obviously very, very good. And it pretty much comes down to gut feeling in this one. And I don't know how you could say that the Patriots are going to lose a game like this. They've been so good. They go to the Super Bowl pretty much every single year. They are the team to beat every year. They seem unbeatable in the playoffs, except last year where they lost to the Eagles in the Super Bowl, but they made it there. Uh, with that being said, though, I am going to take the Chiefs. I'm riding the hot hand. I'm riding the Kansas City Chiefs. Patrick Mahomes goes to the Super Bowl in just his first year starting. Back over to the NFC. Saints, Rams, two high-powered offenses. I think the better defense resides in New Orleans. I don't think the Rams can, can match up. The linebackers are probably the worst part of their entire team. I think Corey Littleton is pretty bad, especially in run defense. He's terrible. He also doesn't cover particularly well, but he is decently fast. He's only like 220 pounds or so. He's very light for a linebacker, and that really hurts him in run defense. The Saints running back combo is the best in the NFL. Alvin Kamara, Mark Ingram, they can hurt you in a lot of ways. And the Rams do not have a cornerback to cover Michael Thomas. And, and it proves that a lot of these other teams in the NFL that the Saints have played all year also do not have a cornerback to cover Michael Thomas. He's been incredible. Uh, he has well over 100 catches now at this point. I don't even think he played last week. Uh, Michael Thomas um, did play last week, uh, but he had 125 catches for 1,400 yards and nine touchdowns. Just absolutely insane. And I think at the end of the day, when you have two high-powered offenses, could kind of go either way. I think the better defense is going to win, and I think the Saints have the better defense. So I am going to take the Saints as we have a uh... <laughs> – wow, this is fun – Two one seeds going up and facing each other in the Super Bowl. I'm glad I made this one super exciting, and I took probably the higher seeded opponent in every single game. How exciting is that? Saints Chiefs in the Super Bowl. Does Drew Brees get another one? Uh, I think the answer in short is yes. I hate that I have the Chiefs making it all the way here, uh, beating the Patriots, which would be such a a crazy feat. I know the Patriots have to go back into Arrowhead and do it again. Really, really tough place to play. One of the loudest places, one of the loudest stadiums in all of the NFL, even though it's not a dome. It just gets super, super loud there. And I think that when it comes down to it, the Saints have a better defense. It's still going to be probably a shootout, uh, but I'm going to take the veteran play caller. 
and I'm going to take the veteran. I know Andy Reid, obviously, veteran play caller. I'm talking about Drew Brees, though. I'm going to take the veteran. I'm going to take the more experienced guy. Uh, I think this team is a little bit better than the Chiefs. The Chiefs really need to go all in on defense this offseason if they want to get back to this point and, and really secure their spot as the best team in the NFL. I think the Chiefs are very good. I just think they're not ready yet. I think they're a year off from winning the Super Bowl. And that is even if they escape the Patriots in the AFC Conference Championship. That was a that was a decision that I wasn't really sure about making, kind of made it on a whim. It's a fun one, uh, but I think at the end of the day, Drew Brees is going to secure his legacy, win the Super Bowl, and then retire. That'd be kind of cool. Um, but either way, I think this will be a fantastic game. What do fans want in general? Offenses to go off, and uh, that's what you have here. You have a Super Bowl where there are two incredible offenses, which means that the final will probably be something dumb like like uh, 17 to, to 10. I, I don't know, something like that. Like <laughs> Low scoring, because it, it wouldn't it just make sense that the two best offenses in the league wouldn't come out and score any points? I think so. But that is going to do it for me. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed the breakdowns as well. Subscribe if you're new. Let me know what you think. And I will see you guys in the next one. Take it easy.